Yes. 50,000 people used to live in the city. Now it's a ghost town. Never seen anything like it. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant made its claim to notoriety in 1986 when it catastrophically failed due to a mixture of design flaws and operator error. The resulting meltdown spewed radioactive particles into the air for nearly 10 days and caused the largest uncontrolled radioactive release into the environment ever recorded. Nuclear fallout consisting of radioactive isotopes iodine-131 and cesium-137 rained down on Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia primarily, but there's also reports from several countries, even as far as the United States, that were affected by this massive leak of radiation. The immediate surrounding area of the Chernobyl power plant was evacuated. The town of Pripyat was left abandoned, and it's still to this day seemingly frozen in time as the residents of the town grabbed only the necessities before fleeing, leaving behind many remnants of their life there. The scale of the disaster, along with the combination of Soviet deception of the incident, has showered the whole event with a dark overtone, paving the way for ideas of conspiracy and ghost stories. Pripyat, the town adjacent to the power plant where its workers and their families lived, is now essentially the story of the abandoned house on the hill, except it's a whole town an isolated post-disaster setting. It's the perfect template for telling a story, and that's something that many storytellers have capitalized on. Chernobyl has been particularly influential in gaming, sometimes being the direct inspiration and sometimes just being the foundation for ideas. While Call of Duty Modern Warfare has famously used Pripyat in their game trailer and as the setting of one of their missions, playing up the ghost town aesthetic of the city, it is of course Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl that is the biggest and most influential game to ever use Chernobyl in its story. Developed by GCS Game World, a Ukrainian game studio, in 2007, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl took inspiration from the novel Roadside Picnic and the subsequent movie based on said novel titled Stalker. These stories are about a group of people that attempt to retrieve valuable items and artifacts from a dangerous exclusion zone following an extraterrestrial-like event called The Visitation. GCS combined the premise behind these stories with the real-life disaster of Chernobyl and its exclusion zone. The creative director of Stalker even stated that the far-fetched sci-fi of the game has its foundation laid in the secrecy and conspiracy of the real events of the plant, such as conspiracies that the Chernobyl power plant was used as a battery for secret Soviet laboratories, and the failure was caused by an overload of one of these secret experiments, or the gigantic antenna located in the exclusion zone that becomes the brain scorcher in the Stalker game, was thought to be facing Western Europe for the intent of using psychotropic waves to influence the human mind. Using this combination of the science fiction based source material and the very real life disaster and conspiracy of Chernobyl, the game became an instant classic. I don't know whether I was right or wrong. I guess I'll never know, but I made it, and I guess I should be thankful for that. Exploring dangerous and irradiated landscapes isn't anything new in gaming. Games like Wasteland and Fallout have portrayed similar settings many years prior. So what makes Stalker so special? And in turn, what makes Chernobyl so special? Put briefly, Chernobyl is just a vibe. Its atmosphere is unmatched. It's not just about the radioactive disaster, that's simply the catalyst. It's the secretive government conspiracies. It's the Soviet-styled brutalist architecture. It's the apartments, the rec centers, the Ferris wheel left in ruins. It's the overgrowth of nature taking back the land once inhabited by humans. It's the discarded Soviet-era technology and military vehicles. It's the sound of silence as the wind blows through the desolate streets and frames of windows left with remnants of their glass panes. It's the clicking of the Geiger counters. It's the ghost town feeling. It's just something in the air or maybe something that is actually there. 
I've made a video before on just how much Stalker perfected building an atmosphere for the player. It's the most atmospheric game that I've ever played. The fact that GCS was able to capture the real life atmosphere and reflect it and amplify it within the game is another bomb of influence on the gaming industry. In a roundabout way, games like Metro, DayZ, Fallout 3, and many, many more are all inspired by Stalker and in turn are inspired by the vibe that is Chernobyl. This Chernobyl aesthetic has bled over into what can be considered more of a generalized post-Soviet aesthetic. Stalker went on to have two sequels as of today, Clear Sky in 2008 and Call of Pripyat in 2009, both games following suit of Shadow of Chernobyl, maintaining both the setting and the atmosphere of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Stalker 2 is also set for release in the near future, hopefully, and I hope that that game maintains the same level of atmosphere that the franchise has upheld so far. Похоже, пора. И куда ты теперь? В Припять. Нужно с ним поговорить. Удачной охоты, Stalker. The Stalker games may be the best at portraying Chernobyl in video games, but they are most definitely not the last ones to do so. The following years did not have many games on Chernobyl specifically, but many games were released using the previously stated post-Soviet abandoned vibe. The Metro series, 2033 Last Light in Exodus, DayZ, Rust, Escape from Tarkov, PUBG, all games that are heavily inspired by the Chernobyl aesthetic. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is. The dissolution of the Soviet Union occurred in 1991, shortly after the power plant disaster. But even to this day, areas trapped in post-Soviet aesthetics are more popular than ever. Thousands of trendy Instagram travelers and even more well-versed travelers that share their adventures on YouTube flock to Soviet aesthetics, documenting the ruins of the USSR and the towns that were left in its shadow. It's a common thing now to take tours of Chernobyl and its exclusion zone, exploring the ghost town yourself, seeing if there's a mystery involved in it all, all while tracking the residual radioactivity with a handheld Geiger counter and dosimeter. All former ways of life and culture are of interest to people. Post-Soviet locations are no different. A lot of the ideas of modern industrial society collapsing go hand in hand with the post-apocalypse feeling, establishing real life ghost towns seemingly stuck in the past. This is why Chernobyl is the beacon of this aesthetic. It is a real life post-apocalypse setting. It's alien and it's exotic. But it wasn't until HBO released a miniseries on Chernobyl in 2019 that there was a rebirth in interest of the specific setting of Chernobyl and Pripyat. And now we currently find ourselves in a boom of Chernobyl inspired video games. Many games with limited narrative and merely using the buzzword of Chernobyl to sell their game are of course released, with games like Chernobyl Road of Death, Chernobyl The Untold Story, and Escape from Chernobyl, and many more. But quality titles are of course being made as well. The talk of the web at the moment is Chernobyl Light. This game takes major inspiration from how Stalker handled Chernobyl. You take the role of a former Chernobyl employee who is mourning the loss of a loved one in the disaster, returning to the exclusion zone in search of their partner, avoiding supernatural phenomenon and horrors of the zone. Chernobylite follows the developers the Farm 51's prior game called Chernobyl's VR Project. They use 3D scanning technology called photogrammetry to map a photorealistic virtual reality environment based on the real world of Chernobyl. Using thousands of photographs and video footage from drones, they are able to manufacture the most realistic depiction of Chernobyl yet in virtual form, something they use in Chernobylite as well as the foundation to build the game on. The game puts a focus not only on the exclusion zone and the conspiracy and horror behind the disaster, but also on the people involved with it. You play as a worker who was subjected firsthand to the disaster, and you go through their emotions and experiences of it all. There is also a game called Chernobyl Liquidator Simulator. 
It's a non-fantasy take on the nuclear power plant that recreates the infamous disaster through the simulation of firefighters and liquidators. This game isn't about the aftermath of the event, but takes place during it as it unfolds. The player is tasked with putting out fires, containing radiation leakage, and saving lives of workers and civilians alike. There are no mutated monsters or supernatural anomalies in this game, just the real threat of fire and radiation that are in some ways almost more morbid and terrifying. And of course, the upcoming Stalker 2 Hearts of Chernobyl. Not much is known about the game at this time, but GCS Game World has stated that they will be following in the footsteps of the first three games. Having the setting in the Chernobyl exclusion zone after a second disaster took place in the power plant, leading to mutated creatures, anomalies, and valuable artifacts that become the focus group of people called Stalkers, who enter this dangerous zone in search of them. The mythology behind Chernobyl has made it such a welcoming template of modern storytelling. From games like Stalker who pioneered the setting, to Call of Duty who used the atmosphere of Pripyat extremely well, using this setting as the focal point of their game trailer and even visiting that level multiple times in their next few games because it was just so iconic, to games like Chernobyl Light and Chernobyl Liquidator Simulator that take a stronger focus on the real life aspect of the disaster and make that shine as well. Chernobyl is a sad and bleak moment in mankind's history, but it's something that left a lasting imprint on our society. That fateful day 35 years ago became a catalyst for a fear of radioactive disaster, for an attention to government control and cover-ups, and for so many unsolved mysteries and unanswered questions morphing into urban legends, conspiracies, and ghost stories. And all of that combined leads us to some badass video games. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Peace. Well, I don't know, but I've been told Uranium ore is worth more than gold So my cad, I bought me a Jeep I got that bug and I can't sleep Uranium fever has gone and got me down Uranium fever is spreading all around With a Geiger counter in my hand I'm going out to take me some government land Uranium fever has gone and got me down well, I had a talk with the AEC and they brought out some maps that looked good to me. And 